everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Aisha if you're new here and in today's video I'm gonna be doing a little bit of a Q&A slash information session all about financial literacy as a young person, money management, building credit, all the stuff that I feel like I have learned throughout the years and I wanna pass along to you guys. But before I jump into all of that, I do wanna say thanks to Google for sponsoring this portion of this video. In case you guys didn't know this about me, I am a little bit of a nerd when it comes to learning and education. So I'm really excited to introduce Google's Applied Digital Skills to you guys. If you haven't heard of it yet, it is a video-based digital literacy curriculum and it's for learners of all ages. So it doesn't matter how young or old you are. And basically it teaches you digital skills that you can then apply to your school, your work, your life in general. And I feel like over the past year, digital has definitely taken over the world. <laughs> so this is such an amazing free program that a lot of you guys can benefit from. I personally, I'm a huge believer in education. Um, I feel like it's obviously very important, but one thing that I noticed that lacked, especially in a lot of colleges and universities and something that lacked when I was in university is the focus on applied skills. Obviously, you Know, with my program there was a large focus on traditional media outlets and traditional ways of learning and just like textbook stuff but there's not so much applied skills so this is such an amazing program that you can just learn tap into online and just learn about amazing things and I'm a visual learner so I love the fact that it's all video based as well like there's someone literally there talking to you which is awesome I'm personally more interested in learning about how to create and expand on an online business um, create a business plan that will actually you know work I'm also learning how to create spreadsheets so that I can manage my monthly expenses all of that good stuff there's just like so much information but specifically I wanted to mention the fact that this is a really great curriculum for someone who maybe you're a new grad or you're graduating soon or on the job search or job hunt um, maybe switching careers and you want to tighten up your resume learn how to write a cover letter send out professional emails also negotiating salaries there's literally so many classes that you can take on Google's applied digital skills so I think this is an amazing opportunity that is free and while we have so much more extra time now um, this is a great kind of way to learn more and just kind of use your digital skills um, in a more like proficient way I guess so check out Google's applied digital skills I will have the link below so you guys can kind of browse through but once again if you are a learner of any age or even a teacher like this is great for parents or guardians that are trying to learn more digital skills as well to keep up with their children and maybe help with their homeschooling or school at home and all of that good stuff, there's literally something for everyone. So just click the link below to sign in and start using Google's Applied Digital Skills. I'm really happy that I got to work with Google on this. Thank you again to Google for sponsoring this portion of this video. And let's go ahead and get into the Q&A portion. So as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, basically what I'm gonna be going through is all of your questions. I asked you on Instagram um, if you had any questions about like financial literacy, investing, um, money management, saving as a young adult, all of that good stuff. And I have to preface, I am definitely not qualified to talk about all of these things, but I just wanna share my personal experience because I am a young black woman in <laughs> a big city and I've gone through schooling. I'm kind of at that age where I'm starting to learn more about investments and halal investments and all that good stuff. And I just want to go further with my money. And I know a lot of people are probably around the same age as me, maybe a little bit older, a little bit younger, and are in that mindset as well. So I'm hoping this video can be helpful. I didn't really prepare that much to be honest i'm just going to be sharing my like raw and honest advice so i hope this is helpful before i do get into all the questions though i want to give you guys a little bit of background info um, i feel like i grew up with a pretty healthy understanding of money um, and what it means to save and all that good stuff. I actually had my first job in seventh grade. I was, how old are we in seventh grade? Like 11 or 12, I was very young. And I feel like that 20 bucks a week that I got walking a kid to school really did well for me because I was able to kind of save my own money and learn how to save from a very, very young age. I opened up my first bank account at 14 years old because that was actually like my 14th birthday wish. Like I wanted to have my own debit card and open up my own bank account. And I feel like a lot of that I owe to my father. So thank you so much daddy for <laughs> teaching me about money management at a very young age. It wasn't, old, it wasn't until I got a little bit older and started like speaking with friends and colleagues and acquaintances and all that kind of stuff that I realized like damn okay you're, you're doing pretty well for yourself like you have a good understanding 
of money and, and investments and not so much investments actually, that's a lie, but like credit and all of that good stuff. So hopefully I can share some of my insight. So this is the first question. Um, how many jobs have you had? Also love your videos. Thank you so much. Um, so let's see, I've actually never counted. I had my first job at in seventh grade. Um, I walked a kid to school as I just told you guys. My second job was, I actually worked at a parking office <laughs> in Toronto. I worked um, at Toronto General and Toronto Western Hospital in their little parking office. Um, and I did that job for about a year and a half, I think I was in high school. Um, so I'd work in the summer and also on the weekends. And then my third job, I had this really strange internship um, with this like sales company and I was basically doing like sales for products inside of Canadian Tire. <laughs> it was honestly such a weird summer job, but I just needed the money and you know, it worked. I guess I got some sales experience as well. My fourth job was in university. I worked for my career center and I was the employer relations and administrative uh, assistant there. So I was working with like job applicants, um, like posting jobs and making events for students and all that kind of stuff. And then my fifth job was actually my internship. It was actually my last job. It was my internship with Kin Community. I was their marketing and uh, partner strategy intern. So I worked on their marketing campaigns uh, with all the YouTubers and you know social media people. And that was kind of like where I learned a lot about what I know from the influencer world and industry. Um, and I think if if I didn't have that job, I probably wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now full time. So yeah, I've had five total jobs. I'm noticing there's also a lot of questions specific to my influencer career and content creation. So I'm going to leave those a little bit towards the end, um, but I will get to them as well. So someone asked how to spend money wisely, save money and invest. Basically, what my dad always taught me growing up was just to save your money. <laughs> um, I personally loved shopping and I loved, you know, treating myself and all that stuff, but I did understand the value of saving. So I would say majority of what I earn, I do save and I don't spend like a crazy amount, even though sometimes it may look like I do. I remember when I had my first job making 20 bucks a week, I really wanted to buy a camera, which now looking back, I'm like, oh, it's so ironic, um, but I wanted to buy my first digital camera and I saved literally every single $20 bill that I got for like six months and I was able to buy my first little camera and it was like the cutest little, I think it was like a, I forget exactly what it was, but I know it was like a bright hot pink camera, <laughs> digital camera and I took that thing with me everywhere. I took so many photos. I still have all those photos on my old Facebook albums <laughs> that are now privated. But yeah, I just like, when I had my mind set on something, I saved for it. But I think now saving is obviously a little bit different. I feel like the reason why I'm saving now is to hopefully invest in like a home later on in life to make sure that I'm comfortable when I decide to retire, to make sure I have emergency funds, when things don't go, you know, how I expect them to. If you don't need to spend your money, then don't. Always live below your means. So if you're making $1,000 every two weeks, uh, so that's like about $2,000 a month, you don't want to be spending $1,500 or like $1,700 throughout the month because then you're not really left with anything, especially after taxes. So I always look at whatever paycheck I get. I split that in half because I'm like, that's going to the government. <laughs> um, those are my taxes, even if it's not that high. And the rest of it, I just try to budget as best as possible. So if I want to you know, eat out a certain amount of times a week or a month, then I will save that. Now let's move on to investments because I'm getting a lot of questions about investments. And this is an area where I'm not 100% comfortable with sharing all of my knowledge on investments. Um, there's obviously many different ways you can invest your money um, from, you know, super safe ways to the riskiest, which I feel like the riskiest is definitely, you know, putting your money towards stocks, which when I say risk, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. You know, we learn in business, higher risk, higher rewards, um, but it could be a potential for bigger losses as well. But, you know, or it takes spending money to make money sometimes. So. That's where investments come to play. You know, you can either invest your money into a home and keep that home for a while and sell it and, you know, make a profit or whatever it is. I know a lot of people are into investment properties um, and that's, I feel like, 
probably something that I want to do a little bit more of just because I'm really into real estate and I feel like it's a little bit safer to invest your money in a home than it is to invest it in you know the stock market and all of that kind of stuff however I will say that investing into the stock market can definitely can definitely bring you higher rewards so if that's something you're more interested in then you can totally do that as well me personally I don't invest on my own i have a financial advisor that does that and a lot of questions um, that i got as well was about halal investments how can you make sure that your investments are going towards halal causes and all of that basically what you mainly just have to look out with is that you're not investing in companies that have anything to do with alcohol gambling things that aren't allowed in our religion you wouldn't want to invest in something like a beer company or you know a vodka company because that's also not allowed in the religion um, but you also have to kind of make sure that you're not investing in certain things that may seem innocent like for example like restaurant companies amusement park companies all of that kind of stuff it may seem like oh it's just an amusement park amusement park but they do sell alcohol they may have like an area for gambling all of that kind of stuff so you do have to be kind of careful um, if you are deciding to do the financial advisor route which is what i did i just had that conversation straight up with my financial advisor and luckily they are from middle eastern descent and they're very familiar with halal investments so they kind of made that work for me as well so also, you do have to worry about interest, but again, I would highly recommend just talking to a financial advisor because they will give you help. Um, and ask around your community. If you're a part of an Islamic community, ask around to see if there are any um, Islamic financial advisors that can help you out as well. There's a lot of companies out there that um, kind of simplify the process for you. Um, the other route is obviously doing it yourself on an app like Robinhood or I don't know what the other ones are, but um, I haven't gotten too much into that, but I have a lot of friends that have. Um, and that's another lucrative way of making money too. So um, check it out and yeah. This is a great question. Um, someone asked what looks good on a resume within the social media industry. What looks good on a resume is obviously experience and that's probably the most annoying thing because I feel like it takes experience to have experience and I think first getting your foot in the door is really hard, um, but once you're in there, it just it opens you know up to a lot of opportunities. But I feel like what looks good on that is making sure you have really good digital skills because social media is all about digital. So you want to make sure you're really into Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. You know all the trends. You know how to use it. That will look really really good on a resume. So even if you know you're not someone who has had experience in social media before. If you have your own social media account, you have a really nice feed, maybe you make some content on the side, but you wanna get into kind of the corporate role, that actually means a lot. When I got my internship with Kin Community, um, which is you know in the social media industry as well, I didn't really have much, I guess, professional social media experience, but I had my YouTube channel, I had my Instagram, I understood that market so well um, that that's kind of what the value, the value that I brought to the table. So it doesn't necessarily have to be job experience, it just has to be experience in general. So if you are looking to get into it, maybe do some free internships or volunteer for certain events, definitely take advantage of all of the extracurriculars at your universities as well. Just try to get experience any way that you can, whether it's paid or unpaid. Someone asked, how do you save money in your 20s? I mean, I am broke, but I need to save. <laughs> Girl, I feel you, okay? So when I graduated university, I was one in debt uh, with student loans. Um, I wasn't really making much money because I didn't go into you know, the corporate role that I was supposed to go into. I decided to do social media and quite honestly, I was making less than $1,000 a month at that point. Um, so it was really hard to save. But I think my biggest tip is to really watch what you're spending. I think what a lot of people don't realize because you know, you might go to Starbucks one day and spend $5. You might go and get some pretzels later on that's another 10 bucks or something. And that's like $15 in one day that you could have saved towards something. So I think signing up for an app that really helps manage your expenses is important because it'll actually tell you what you're spending. And you can even kind of create uh, a budget in there. Like you don't want to go over let's say $200 every two weeks or every month or something and it'll give you a notification be like hey slow down on your spending so I have a couple apps linked down below I believe there's one called mint 
if I'm not wrong. That is kind of just like a money management app as well. And you basically just input your debit cards and your credit cards or whatever you have, and it'll, you know, kind of track all of your expenses. So I think just making sure you know exactly what you're spending on and you're not just spending aimlessly. One of the easiest ways to cut on spending is to stop going to Starbucks. Stop going to Starbucks, sis, okay? I'm talking to you. It's just very simple, very small things that you can change throughout your lifestyle that will help you save in the long run. Someone said, what should you invest your money in in your early 20s? Um, I think you should invest your money in literally anything you can. I think obviously in your 20s, probably buying a house isn't the most re realistic. Unless you can, girl, more power to you. So I think people really underestimate the importance of investing and starting as young as possible because you know, if you want to retire by 55, 60, whatever it is, you're gonna have to have some money left over, so you might as well start saving now. And it sounds a little morbid to think about, but your future self will definitely thank you. So, but the biggest tip that they did tell me is that definitely don't keep your money in savings at the bank because that money is literally not doing anything for you. You could just keep that exact same amount of money into an investment portfolio or into investments and that would be making more than triple, double, tens, you know, on top of that. So keep it out of the bank. The bank ain't gonna do nothing for you except for take that money and build their own investments so you might as well build it yourself. How do you network and branch out to companies senior year of college? Oh my God, okay. So I don't know if all colleges or universities are the same as mine was, um, but I know in my senior year of college, there's always recruiters coming to school. And I, I'm pretty positive that this happens everywhere. I'm sure you've gotten those emails about like, oh, PWC or, oh, like, I don't know, L'Oreal or Coca-Cola or Pepsi is coming to your school this day. And you're just kind of like, yeah, yeah, whatever use those opportunities. It might sound stupid to like go to one of those like wine and cheese networking events, even if you don't drink, okay? But going there and networking is so important because there's literal recruiters, like people that work for the company are there. So just keep an eye out to see if there's anything that interests you. And honestly, even if it doesn't, I would still go because it's building that experience on how to network. Um, so just going there and introducing yourself, giving them like a little background information on yourself, what you're interested in um, and all of that good stuff. I think that's really, really important. So I would take advantage of that because I don't think I think people realize how many free and valuable events that your university does for you that you wouldn't be able to get out in the real world. Like having the opportunity to have recruiters come to you, whereas normally you'd have to be creeping them on LinkedIn or whatever it is, um, that's like so important. But I would highly recommend using LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn is so important and actually I want to shout out a friend of mine on Instagram because she has been posting so many gems on LinkedIn, um, on like kind of how to utilize LinkedIn for your job search and landing a position, negotiating salaries, all of that good stuff. So I'm gonna have her Instagram linked down below, but her name is Rowan OG. Um, and she has a bunch of LinkedIn tips on there as well. But I would just go on LinkedIn, literally follow all of the companies that you are interested in, literally all of them. So if you're interested in beauty companies, follow all of them and make sure you're following some of the recruiters as well if you possibly can. But if not, you'll still get notifications on like future job applications or um, you know new job openings. You can kind of see what the company is doing and learn a little bit about it so that when you do finally get the opportunity to maybe interview for that company that you have more information to kind of say within that and it'll show that you are seriously interested in it. And honestly, if you're a little bold like I was in university, you can actually reach out to those people too. So I personally was really interested in learning about Revlon. I had um, a job at the Career Center, as I let you know, and I had to do a project on some sort of career that I was interested in. So I reached out to someone at Revlon. She was a brand manager and that's kind of the position that I wanted to go into, obviously before I decided to go full-time with social media. Um, and I just asked her out to lunch. I was like, hey, do you wanna go out for sushi or something? Like, I'd love to just kind of learn more about your job, do a little interview on you. Um, and she said yes. And we went out to lunch and it was kind of the start of this relationship. Obviously, you know, I didn't end up working there because I work for myself now, but that's another option that you can do. Literally just ask someone out for coffee, ask them to maybe look over your resume or give you tips. Just anything that you're able to just put yourself out there in front of those recruiters is what's gonna land you that job. Someone asked, is there a halal way to loan 
um, to attend to college. I'm guessing like student loans and stuff. Um, now I don't want to speak on this religiously because I don't know too much about it to be honest. But what I did is usually there's a little bit of a grace period between when you have to pay back your loans and they don't you don't accumulate interest within that grace period. Um, for me, it was about six months. And I personally just asked my dad uh, to loan me some money. And obviously not everyone is in this position. I'm just telling you what I personally did. I asked my dad to loan that money so I could pay off you know, that debt and I just paid my dad back interest free. So that's kind of how it worked out for me. So if you know you know someone that can do that for you, I think that's a great option as well, um, just to kind of like steer away from the interest part of it. Someone asked, should you save while paying off debt? Yes, absolutely. Um, obviously when you're paying off debt, not like every single portion of the money that you make is going towards paying off that debt, you're still gonna have some residual money and that residual money you can use to save. I don't think you should strictly just focus on paying off your debt before you know, you're know you able to save because by the time your debt is paid off, you wanna have a little bit of a crash landing as well. So yeah, definitely you can do both at the same time. Someone asked, how do you build credit without getting interest involved? I had a credit card since I was 18 years old and I feel like a lot of people are really scared about credit cards because they just assume, you know, you're just gonna accumulate all this interest, you're gonna be paying a lot more. There's two things. Yes, a credit card and the way credit card companies make their money is because people usually don't pay off, you know, their full amount and they accumulate interest that way. However, if you just spend what you actually have in your account and pay that off immediately, then you're good. You're not gonna be paying any interest. You're actually gonna be racking up points and all of that stuff. So I use my credit card for everything. I never use my debit card unless I'm like taking money out of a ATM. Like sometimes I even forget about my debit card. Um, but I put everything on my credit card. I obviously know that I have that money in the bank account that, that I can then pay off. And I pay off the money literally the same week, if not the same day. Like as soon as it obviously shows in your account. Um, just so that you're not worried about if you forget, if you accumulate interest, um, you obviously don't want to hurt your credit score. So just making sure you're paying off 100% of you know, your balance uh, before that end date is very, very important. And that's obviously a way you will avoid paying interest. Someone asked how to build up my credit and I feel like I am definitely very qualified on answering that because obviously if you guys don't know I moved here from Canada and unfortunately when you move to a new country your credit score does not follow you. So while I did have amazing credit back in Canada when I came here it was literally zero. Like I had nothing to my name, no credit history, like nothing at all. So what I did and this is probably a helpful tip for any, any Canadians that are going to be moving to the US uh, very soon. What I first did is I signed up for American Express because they have a program where if you do end up moving to the US You can qualify for a US credit card right away, even though you don't have any credit um, But the best ways to build up credit is obviously to have something that you're paying off whether that is rent utilities um, You know a car loan something like that, but what is kind of tough is that it takes credit to build credit. Like you have to have something. So whether that's getting, you know, a family member or someone to co-sign for you so that you can start building your credit that way and then eventually, you know, they'll be taken off the co-sign and you can continue building your own credit. The way that I did it is luckily I did have my American Express right as soon as I came here and I just paid everything on my credit card. So at the very least I knew that you know the portion of my credit score that has to do with paying off your payments on time is going to be 100% all the time and it's going to be in the green. Contrary to popular belief, it actually is a good thing um, when you have multiple streams of credit under your account. So whether that is, you know, a car loan as I mentioned, maybe like two different credit cards, maybe even three different credit cards. If you have a mortgage, I don't know. <laughs> All of those things will kind of help credit bureaus know that you know, you're know you good with your money essentially. So that's kind of how I did it. And yeah, I mean my credit score right now, like I said, I built it from zero and now it's almost, almost to like 750 or maybe it's just over 750, which is like, really amazing for only being here for about a year and a half now. A little pat on my back, but. Tracking spending is so draining. How can we do it without feeling exhausted, restricted, and guilty or restricted? As I mentioned, the Mint app, I believe it's called Mint. If I'm saying it wrong, I'm sorry, but I'll have it linked down below. That app is really great and it doesn't really make you feel exhausted or restricted or anything. It just, 
you know, you create whatever budget that you want to work on or work with, and then it just reminds you of your goals essentially. So I think doing that is a really healthy way and it can build a healthier relationship with money as well because it's something that you're doing on your own terms and it's not so much like you guilting yourself with every single purchase. Someone asked how to find internships for university students. Um, I may be a little biased here <laughs> because it's literally what I did in, uh, in my job in university, but literally look in your career center. Every university and college has a career center and I feel like not a lot of students take advantage of that. But if you go onto their portal, they usually have job listings and all the requirements. And sometimes they even have information on whether there's events that have to do with it or whatever. I think also specifically your career center is great because those are usually more like private listings so it's not so much internships and listings that you would see on indeed or like any of those job search uh, engines so it really is kind of just like a, a curated piece of jobs that you can pick from and apply to so that would be my first tip and then of course there's indeed oh and linkedin sorry i don't know why i didn't mention that linkedin also has job um, internship opportunities and stuff too so um, that's really great if you want to like focus on a specific industry or specific company, just follow their LinkedIn. Someone asked, do I think that rent is a waste of money? Um, I used to have that idea that like rent was just such a waste, but I think the older I got, the more I realized like rent is just a no risk way of living. Um, I feel like obviously buying a home is a wonderful investment. And I, like I mentioned many times, can't wait for the, wait, uh, the time that I do that. Um, but I think renting is great for people who one, obviously don't have enough money for a down payment to someone who maybe doesn't wanna buy a home because they enjoy living in a big city and living in the center of a city and just don't want the pressure of like, owning a home, you know? Cause when you own a home, you have to pay all of your utilities. I just feel like there's more flexibility with renting, especially at my age right now. Um, but I think, you know, when I eventually maybe get remarried um, or I'm on the verge of that, that's when I would probably look into purchasing a home or when I decide where I want to live more full, full term full term long term long term that's the word is living in LA expensive hell yeah girl it is very expensive unfortunately <laughs> someone asked what is credit and how important is it in the real world credit is just a made up thing of society that lets people know if you can actually afford things or not it's honestly really annoying to have to deal with because sometimes you can have a lot of money and be very good with your money but you don't have a great credit score so no one will give you anything to your name <laughs> so it's kind of just like this made up capitalistic thing um but unfortunately we all live in the capitalist world so we have to go along with it um, it is very important to have good credit if you ever want to purchase a home if you want to loan out a car if you want to even get an apartment you have to good you have to have good credit there's just so many things like if you want to finance something um, there's just so many things where your credit score is super important for but yeah it is very important so I definitely would not overlook it and if you are young I would definitely look into how you can build a strong st uh, credit score from now because whatever you do now will affect you in the future someone asked what's the right amount of credit cards to have I don't think there's any right amount um, but I would say at least, at the very least, two. I personally have three credit cards or four. I have like four credit cards. Um, but it, it really just matters on like your usage, basically. But if you are looking into getting a credit card, I would 100% just get one that will give you great rewards so that you don't have to pay for your flight, sis. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm going to answer just a few questions about the influencer world um, before I close this off. Uh, someone actually asked, is it hard to explain your finances to people like a landlord or accountant as an influencer? And oh my God, yes. <laughs> it is, especially in the beginning when I first was starting out, it was really hard to kind of explain that. Not so much to my, to my accountant because luckily all the accountants I've worked with have been in the entertainment business so they understand this kind of world. Um, and that's a huge tip if you are an influencer or a creative or freelancer, definitely find an accountant that deals with the same amount of people so they know um, how to manage you know your accounts and stuff but i think at the end of the day as long as you are able to show some s stream of income that is sustainable and that is consistent then that's kind of all they care about um, someone said how do you diversify your work slash how do you choose projects um luckily i think i 
I myself, as well as my management, um, does a really good job at filtering out exactly what type of things I want to do. We meet usually on a monthly, if not like bi-weekly basis, um, and we just talk about what kind of projects I want to do, what I don't want to do, what they can automatically say no to, etc. And like at this point, they know. For example, like my manager just texted me this morning and was like, "LOL, um, a like alcohol company reached out to work with you. I can't believe they still don't didn't get the memo." And like she's not Muslim herself um, she's just a white girl and for her to know that and like know my values and beliefs like right away is so great for what I do because it just kind of simplifies every process for me so I just work with brands that I really love and I already use and I know that you guys would love and use so that's kind of how I filter it out because I never want to promote something that you guys probably wouldn't be interested in because that's not only I mean embarrassing for me but it's also embarrassing on the company too because then they're not gonna get any sales, they're not gonna get any buzz around their products. So you have to think about it kind of logically that way and not so much as just a check. Someone asked, how much money do you spend on creating content for YouTube versus what you make on YouTube? I mean, this is kind of a loaded question. I feel like if I look at specifically what I just make from my videos from my YouTube channel, I am definitely spending a lot more than I make on each video. So for example, I'll just pick this random video from two weeks ago. I made like, go to revenue, I made $295 on my baking matcha cookies vlog. Um, this vlog over here, as you guys can see, I made $295. And I spend around like 200 to 250 on um, each video that I have edited. So th if that gives you any rendition on like what the actual breakdown is, um, then that's how you guys kind of know. Like I don't, I honestly, like I spend more to make my videos than I do actually in the end, um, but that's when sponsorships come into play. So that's kind of how I'm able to support myself and continue making videos and investing in my channel and all that kind of stuff. I feel like people maybe assume that I make a lot more um, through like Google AdSense or YouTube or whatever it is, um, but I, I personally don't. So like I mentioned many times, I feel like it takes spending money to make money and I learned that very early on and I am definitely very comfortable spending my money if I know that it's gonna be a good investment towards my content, so. But as I mentioned, I never spend above my means. So luckily, you know, although I don't make as much on my YouTube videos singly, um, singly, <laughs> girl, this is a video about education. You were you using words like singly. <laughs> You guys know what I mean. I don't think I need to finish that, but uh, that's why I get really excited to work with sponsors because it means I actually am making a profit off my videos and not a loss. Someone asked, "What aspect of work slash brand deals improved with having management with having a management influencer company? And which company is it?" So my management is DBA Media, Digital Brand Architects. You can find them on Instagram if you'd like. And I feel like a lot of things improved after signing with them. I think the number one thing was just definitely my time management because I no longer had to negotiate contracts, um, negotiate budgets. I no longer had to do a ton of outreach to brands to work with them. I no longer had to like sit down and you know go back and forth with brands for days on end when I could have been making content. So I feel like in that sense, it's definitely really helped um, kind of my career progress. But then also just budget wise, I feel like it's a lot harder to play a manager than it is yourself. Sometimes companies want to take advantage of the influencers and my manager is like, mm -mm, not today, sis. <laughs> so I love that. I did it for myself for a while and I really, really loved it and I learned a lot but I was definitely very happy to pass along all of that work to someone else. How do you get to manage your business and do other things at the same time? This is interesting because I feel like I'm always working, but at the same time, I have a lot of free time to do whatever I want as well. And I think it just, when I am working, I'm working really hard. And then when I'm not working, I'm playing really hard, if that makes sense. Like I just make sure to get all my work done, um, you know, in a timely manner, and then I get to kind of enjoy myself. And I think that's the best part of what I do. My work is very flexible and I worked really hard to get to that point. Um, and it's not like that all the time. I feel like for any entrepreneur or someone starting out a business, you're gonna be putting tons of hours in, but the outcome is, or like the final, I guess, end goal is, is that eventually, you know, the business starts to run itself and you can kind of like enjoy your life a little bit more, but you definitely have to put in years of work before you get to that point. So I've been doing this full time for nearly four years now. It's gonna be four years in May and I'm really proud of 
you know everything that I've accomplished so with that I think I'm gonna end this video I hope you guys enjoyed it I know it was quite long but hopefully I was able to give you guys some really useful information but yeah if you guys enjoyed this video let me know in the comments below and let me know if you want me to do more like educational based videos like this advice videos just stuff that I've learned as I mentioned I am not a professional this is just stuff that I've picked up in my 25 years of life and I thought that I would pass along to you guys so thank you so much for watching I love you guys and subscribe if you are new because listen we're almost at 450 actually we just we just kind of we just got over the hump of 430 but like I, in my head we're like almost at 450k so half a million is on the way I can smell her so please subscribe um, and yeah I love you guys and I will talk to you in my next video bye everyone Mwah.